Lucky Barnard, and I own Artful Dodger Tattoo and Comics uh, for about 10 years here in Seattle, Washington. Um, and I have been a lifelong comic book fan. It's actually what got me into comics, um, or I'm sorry, got me into tattooing. Um, my love of comics has been something that I grew up with, uh, my brothers and I collecting, and even before then. Um, and um, I've always had a fascination with um, superheroes and the artwork and the writing and the fantasy of it. And it was my escape medium when I was a child at a pretty... Uh, a pretty strange upbringing so like it was my escape it was something that i got to go to and it cultivated my love of art and drawing um and that strangely developed later on into an accidental tattoo career which i've been doing for 21 years pretty much all over the west coast and um the last 13 or 14 or so in the pacific northwest um in Seattle, Washington, and also Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. So I've been doing this for enough time now that um, that I have kind of somehow merged both of my loves together. When I opened up my shop, I wanted it to be a comic book shop and a tattoo shop because of my loves. And um, we've had an opportunity because of that to tattoo in cool places such as like ZombieCon and such as um, Crypticon and Seattle, you know, the EC Emerald City Comic Con in Seattle here. Um, and we've had a lot of opportunity to do a lot of these cool kind of non-conventional tattoo conventions. Um, so we, I've, I've gotten to merge my loves together, but um, now I'm at a point where I would... Um, I've definitely been, especially over the course of the last three or four years, have been at a place in my life where I've been able to pursue kind of the comic book collecting I've always wanted to do. And through Devin, who has actually helped me um, get to that point, um, we've really kind of combined together with his love of tattoos and my love of comic books, and we've, we've cultivated this friendship through that. And um, so he came to me with this idea of like, hey, I really want to go see uh, these comic book shops that we all hear about in the industry and we all see on Instagram and, and all over online. And we've always heard about these amazing comic book shops or seen them on TV or in uh, other documentaries and such. Why don't we I want to go check them out and then end up doing new york city comic con which i've never even been to new york before um so i'm really excited about this part of the adventure but um, we are friends who both love tattoos and both love, com love comic books and i'm really really excited to uh to get on the adventure we leave tomorrow i'm really happy um i haven't gotten to do something like this and so this is a a real pleasure for me to finally get to pursue the love that got me into the career that I've been supporting my family with. So, um, but if I was to look into like, what are my favorite comics? Um, I've always, since I was a kid, um, I've really been drawn to the X-Men books. Um, my son was named after the green arrow. Um, he's always been my favorite DC character. So my son's name is Oliver. <clears throat> um, so, um, but I would say that I kind of, in my late teens and early twenties, I definitely steered towards independent stuff and a lot of dark horse stuff and a lot of, um, you know, during the, the nineties at that period, um, you know, that was when the, the image and comics collapse happened. So, um, you know, I, I took a break for a little while, but now that I'm back in, you know, I'm, I'm all over the board. I read a lot of Daredevil. Um, I've been reading Saga and a lot of different kind of independent titles and a lot of stuff that Devin's kind of turned me on to and other friends and stuff. But um, mainly I'm really into, you know, collecting um, a lot of Bronze Age and um, some Silver Age kind of keys and trying to find those. And the hunt really matters to me. The hunt is something that I really enjoy. Um, but I've gotten to the point now 
um, where I'm going to be making a major move to the East Coast. So this trip for me is not so much a collecting trip, but um, I have decided to put some money aside um, for my move. I've also got a couple other bills. I got to put both my kids in braces um, and a eighth grade D Washington DC trip for my daughter. So my goal on this trip is actually I'm going to be selling books. I'm actually brought a bunch of books with me, some really cool keys that um, I'm going to be I'm going to be seeing if I can uh, along this trip with also getting to see the history of these shops and talking to these to these owners and really getting deep into the comics love with these guys um i'm going to be actually looking forward to trying to uh to make to sell some books and flip some books and see what i can do to kind of help build up my fund for our move to to charleston south carolina um next year so um i am really excited to i've never been in that end of the market i've always been the buying side of the market so like i've never been in the the other end so this is going to be a really interesting um kind of learning experience for me that i'm really looking forward to on top of just having fun with Devin, just having fun looking going from city to city and just checking out these amazing amazing comic book stores that uh you only get to read about, you only get to hear about, and we get to travel around and actually check them out. So I'm really, really happy to be a part of this. I'm really, really happy to be um, in a situation in my life where even in my 40s, my love, I get to, I get to be, pursue my love of comics, and I'm really, really excited for that. So, um but yeah, I'm, we, we get to get up and get on an airplane tomorrow. And we're off to Vegas. Um, not, not really a Vegas guy, but I will make Vegas fun. So we are going to have a good time. So really looking forward to this. Do you see it moving? Is it recording? Okay, perfect. All right, what's going on, YouTube? Uh, my name is Devin. I am the, the guy with the comics and stuff. You guys have been following me for the last three, four years of my comic book journey. Uh, my, my, my time educating people and telling people about my love for comic books and um, now it's all kind of culminated to this this moment where uh, myself and my buddy Lucky we are hopping on this this crazy comic shop tour across the country on our way to uh, the New York Comic Con and I am so excited I have never thought of ever doing anything this big this kind of just happened it kind of fell into my lap um, one might say it came to me in a dream, but not really. It just was a dream of mine that I always thought would be really neat, and I finally had enough money to do it. So we hopped into it, and, um, you know, it's it's crazy that it's actually happening. So I'm still trying to really reel in and make sure that I am, am understanding the magnitude of this trip. I mean, we are visiting uh, so many places. We're visiting Torpedo, Mile High, Heroes Aren't Hard to Find, Midtown, um, oh my god, and, and Secret Stash. It's It's there's so much um you know i've been i've been doing comic books for years i've been you know i started off as as a kid uh i used to draw a comic book for the community center that i used to go to um as a kid after school and it was called pizza Man, the adventures of pizza man and his sidekick slicehead and that's that's a true story um slicehead was a little like sentient slice of pizza that would follow around one of the guys from pizza planet that you saw from toy story uh that was pizza man and I used to draw those uh, with pens and then copy them at my community center, staple them together, and um, distribute them to my friends at the community center. So I've been doing comic books since I was a kid. I think a lot of it started with when, when, when I was a kid, my mom would buy me those Archie Double Digests from uh, Safeway at uh, you know at the checkout stand. They were, they were like $2 a piece, and I used to read them like absolute crazy. So one might say that Archie was my doorway into comic books, but... Uh, you know, I remember my first comic book, actual legitimate comic book, was when I was maybe 10 years old, so 2003-ish. Um, I was at a flea market in California, and there was a Star Wars comic that was just so cool looking. It was a lady that I had never seen before with a lightsaber on it. It was um, Star Wars Outlander number 6. It was the Dynamic Forces foil version, and I had to have it. It was $10 at the time, so really it was quite the investment and now it's worth about six dollars so you know um 
as far as an investment standpoint, golly, did I did I mess that up? But you know, it's it's a book that I still have that I hold on to, and it's it's a real memory of where I started when it comes to comic books. Um, you know, and as the years went by, I started reading more and more. But I've always been a true fan of sci-fi. You know, my 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 love and my passion has always been uh, Star Wars and sci-fi, laser guns, laser swords, things like that. And so when I when I discovered uh, Green Lantern back in like when they were doing Darkest Night um, back in like 2010, 2009, something like that, I latched onto it and then just took a straight nosedive. Not even I wasn't graceful about it or anything. Just went right into DC Comics and started just going into it. Um, I can't even remember what happened really. It just, I just went face first and next thing I know I'm buying a $10,000 comic book. Um, And that's something that I never thought I'd actually be able to say is that I am buying a $10,000 comic book, which is something that, you know, I have now learned about and have oh god i'm just rambling uh (laughs) so what i currently collect right now my my expertise and what i like is romance and sci-fi um i mostly pre-1970s i love dc romance the dc romance comic books are unlike any others in my opinion i mean you know you have marvel you have uh you have marvel romance comics that are just kind of mundane in my opinion there's there's ginger there's archie there's Um, you know, all that stuff. But when it comes to DC, they had their own universe in the 70s. And so something like in the 60s and the 70s, which is something that I really love. So they had uh, Bonnie Taylor, airline stewardess, flying in and out of romantic adventures. And, you know, back in the day, that was something acceptable. But flying in and out of romantic adventures these days might make you seem a little promiscuous. Um, In any case, but I love collecting those because those were characters that have fallen so far into obscurity that nobody these days knows who they are. So I I collect that and I I collect sci-fi. I was saying earlier, I I love my Star Wars. I love laser guns and and laser swords. So when I I see old sci-fi stuff, when I see people with jetpacks, aliens, rocket ships, I have to have it. Um, Which ultimately led me to getting my personal holy grail, which was a Blue Bolt number 105, which was probably the single-handedly most expensive comic book I've ever owned. But it's it was a dream of mine to have, and I finally had it. And once I got that, I was like, oh man, I know what's next is this this comic book trip. So um, yeah, nowadays what do I do? I, I run I run this YouTube channel. I educate people about comic books. I educate people about comic book history. I talk about it. I um, and through that, actually, I have met a lot of people. One of the people that I've met uh, is my friend Lucky, who I'm doing this trip with. Uh, I don't actually... It's funny, I've thought about this before, but I don't actually know how Lucky and I started talking. I seem to remember going into his, his tattoo slash comic book shop for one reason or another, discovering that there was comic books in there, getting a tattoo and then somehow becoming really good friends with him. And it just happened. Um, and now here we are, however many years later, this is four or five years later. I think I met him when I was like 21 and I'm 26. So yeah, it's like five years. And we are going on this trip together. And honestly, there's not really anybody else that I would rather go on this trip with. Um, he's a knowledgeable guy, he's a great guy. He he and I, he's, he's not only a good friend of mine, but he does a lot of my tattoos and um, you know, uh, I was listening to him talk and, you know, he was saying that tattoos and comic books really brought us together. And I don't think there's anything more true than that. I mean, I, I love tattoos. I love art. I love, uh, you know, culture. I love things like that. And so when I, when I get tattoos, that's, that's a huge form of like self-expression. And a lot of my self-expression is through pop culture and art. So when, when Lucky and I talk, when we, when we, uh, you know, when, when I bug him about a tattoo idea, I mean, you know, he, gives me a lot of shit and he laughs but um you know he, he we always somehow make it work and now i'm covered in planet of the apes hellboy um bears and saga that that he's done and um you know i've i've really come to appreciate the guy but <laughs> um yeah you know and and now uh, oh my god, I'm so bad at this. But yeah, so so tomorrow, tomorrow, that's September 25th. We are we are freaking leaving. We are hopping on a plane at 3:30 in the afternoon. We're gonna fly down to Vegas. We're gonna see Torpedo Comics. We're gonna go see the man behind the Red Hood and his operation. We're gonna go to to Denver. We're gonna go see Mile High Comics. I mean, I'm 
ready to go. Uh, I, I, I ran out of work today at, you know, about four hours early just so I can be here to, uh, to film this. So, you know, um, I'm excited to take you guys on this adventure with me. I have never undergone a project this big, like I said. So it's going to be an interesting learning experience to try to plane hop and interview people and uh, just do comic books for two weeks straight. This is going to be the best thing ever, and I'm so excited that everybody is going to be following along with this, even if it's just on YouTube um, or if it's in theater maybe. Hey, who knows what's going to happen? But in any case... I digress. Um, thanks for tuning in, you guys, and please just enjoy the show. Yo, yo. hiding in plain sight and they know nothing but today we're going to torpedo comics and i'm really excited because they have the gulf the, the gulf the, the vault at gotham or something like that where they keep billions the of bazillions gotham. the dolphin at gotham there we go <laughs> the, the, the vault at gotham the vault at gotham i don't know uh there's a bazillion dollars worth of comic books in there that's what i'm excited for uh, we just had our first overnight here. We hung out with Rob from uh, the man behind the Red Hood, Red Hood Comics, and uh, did some deals, hung out, played with guns, and uh, ate at a Hooters, which was the, I've never done that before, so that was really cool. Um, had sliders, it was awesome. And uh, now we're waiting for our Enterprise rent a car to pick us up so we can go and get a, another car. We're, we're going in a car to get another car to go and drive so we don't have to pay for a car, but we're paying for a car. I don't know. I feel really bad because I'm not like super photogenic when it comes to this stuff. And so I feel like I'm going to look like this <laughs> in all of our... What now? Custom here? Can I say fuck shit balls yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that? Okay. All right. My name's Gabe. I work at Torpedo Comics. Uh, I am a little bit of everything: uh, cashier, buyer, uh, and also the social media kind of manager or expert or stalker or social media clown, whatever. Yeah, yeah like I'm, I'm the guy. Yeah. If you ever see Torpedo's Instagram and stuff, that's 95% me. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So my origin story with comics, first comic book I ever got, all right, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Ninja Turtles number one, the old Mirage, Kevin Eastman, Peter Laird stuff, yeah. uh, a friend gave it to me. Wow. 
but it wasn't a first print. It's not like, you know, I, I, I struck gold and got like some $30,000 comic when I was a kid. Yeah, it's a right. fifth print. It's, just, it's a dirty, ratty, nasty copy. What a yeah. So it was just a messed up copy, but I still got it. I have it signed by Kevin Eastman. That kind of, that's, I remember when I got that, I was like, how do I read this comic? Like, how do these panel flows kind of work? He's that early stuff. stuff is just, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's violent. Like, like it's the... The Foot Clan are not robots. They're actual people getting just stabbed and just there's blood everywhere. Wow. The death of Superman was a big deal for me too. That, that, that kind of started it as well. Uh, a lot of underground weird stuff. Like I don't know how I came across like these weird underground comic stuff, like the Furry Freak Brothers and Eight Ball and things that you know like a, an 11 year old <coughs> shouldn't have access to. Yeah, you know, all that Daniel Klaus like just weird, um, you know, uh, crumb stuff. Just the things where it's like. I'm seeing boobs for the first time, yeah. and, you know. Did you ever <laughs> like, see Jizz comics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jizz comics. Um, God, there's just so many weird just underground stuff that I really got into in the first place. So I started working in Torpedo about a little over two years ago. Um, I've worked at other comic shops before. Um, one of the previous managers here knew me from working at a different comic book store. So when Torpedo opened up, I was, and I'm totally going to brag, brag about it, and I'll just pat myself on the back. Everybody else is still afraid to use email. Spreadsheets is like a is like a foreign language. With like Diamond, who's the distributor that, that right. every comic book store uses, I knew how to work the system and I knew how ordering worked and how to track and things like that. So there was like this very good Venn diagram where I'm a comic nerd and I know how the business works. So you're like the IT king. Right, for, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, just the most IT here, which isn't a lot. It just means I know how to work a spreadsheet more than anybody else. Just from my, my, my different careers and my different job paths that I had before. <laughs> All right, so the idea, so Torpedo's been around for a long time. The big part about it, the thing that kind of like sparks it a little bit is the owner of the store, of course, is John Domayan. So he's a gentleman from this band called System of a Down. But before System of a Down was System of a Down, John made money and his, his main source of income was comic book dealing. Okay. And it just it, when cool. when it became he became a big band uh, superstar and whatnot, uh, it just gave him a larger access to comics. So Torpedo's been around for about twenty years. It originally started out as just doing shows and and dealer stock and, and things like that. And about three years ago, the actual store opened up, and here we are as a store because everybody kept asking us at shows, "You guys should open the store. You should open the store." So the main thing that really makes us special is we are legitimately 98% comic books in the store. Okay. Uh, I noticed. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it, if you're talking about comic book store, we are a comic book store. There are actual comic books in this store. The other 2% is statues, but they're still comic book related statues and hot toys and things like that. We stay away from the idea of having our store be infiltrated with like pops or gaming um, or the comic book kind of ephemera that really hits other stores. Today's new books are tomorrow's back issues, but we are primarily a back issue store as well. Great. As you as you can see here, I mean, we have golden age comics, we got silver age comics, we got uh, 90s books, we got back issues from the bronze age and the silver age as well. So this is the store where comic book collectors and comic book readers and fans who are looking for comic books specifically have found their mecca and their homeland is this store. And this is a store where it's set up where it looks like almost like a museum, but everything is here for sale and you get to see the things that you don't get to see anywhere else. You walk into other, other stores sometimes and you got to take 10, 15 steps in the store before you find a comic book. Yeah. The moment you step into this store, you know it's a comic book store. Yeah. The idea of the brick and mortar also is is is, a compun is, a, is the community aspect. Yeah, We're yeah. planting our flag, yeah. come here to the store, we got cool shit here that you yeah. can't see anywhere else yeah. that you can buy. Yeah. Like there, you know, the, you can't come in here and give us yeah. your hard hard earned money and you get that book that you've always wanted and you've never seen in person. Yeah. You do that here. Not just that, but we also have signings every fucking month. Every month we have a signing of like massive, massive creators. Okay. Yeah. So to, today's Thursday, Friday, on Saturday, so in two days, by the time this video goes up, it's already going to be out. Uh, we got Jim Shooter, 
Oh. We got Ryan Stegman. We got uh, Mike Zek and John Beatty. We got four massive legends and superstars in this store. And that's something that other stores don't really do or embrace the idea of having these type of people come to a physical store yeah. and do that. Even a lot of sub creators even don't want to do that. They want to do video chats and things like that, which is fine. But we provide this signing event month after month after month. We get people from all over the world. I mean, yeah, take you guys, for example, who flew down here from Seattle. We get folks from, we get a lot of mass people from Canada, all over the country, far reaches of Eastern Europe who come here just to, not just to, but we become a part of their vacation. Yeah. Like, this is, they take time out of their day to go on vacation here in Vegas and they cut a piece of that time out of their vacation because they want to come visit Torpedo. In the category of comics, you know, if you were to categorize comic book stores, we are definitely a, a, a category on our own. We're the only store that carries a supply of statues and hot toys. Yeah. Because they're, they're super expensive, even on our end to buy. So oh, yeah. most stores can't really put the investment in. Put the investment or the time and the effort into doing it. Same with the back issues. There's a lot of time, investment, knowledge mm -hmm. that some people just can't really, you know, feel the effort is there. So do you guys have like a curating team to do that? Or does everybody just have that general knowledge? Or does each person on the team have a different expertise elsewhere? Or Everybody here has their own expertise, but there's a large, there's a, most of us are a part of that, that curator yeah. that goes, this is the books that we want. These are the good books. And we kind of, we all have our own kind of grading habits, but we also have big old massive bodybuilder, Steve, who is our main grader. And right. he's our main guy that, that does the Silver Age books and the Golden Age books and, and, and stuff like that. So yeah. We also travel around the country to do uh, conventions yeah. and set up booths at different conventions. The Instagram, the, the, the kind of side deals that we make. There's a lot that goes on in this store. Well, I think currently, I mean, with the, the 90s crash that happened, is like this crazy event that, you know, was a bubble sparked on basically a perfect storm of other scenarios that, that mm -hmm. came across it. I mean, you got your speculator boom, you had your uh, distributor wars that were going on and things like that. Today, it's, it's it's a little hard to kind of pinpoint. We got a great, we have ne comic books have never had this much attention, mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. In like the almost 100 years that comic books has, has been around. Not the Superman 50 show, not Batman 66, not the movies from the 70s, not the movies from the 80s, not the movies from the 90s or early 2000s. It's the current idea and the current place we are with the Marvel MCU movies and the DC films and some of the other kind of smaller franchise films that are coming out that are really, what, lick my nipples, Canon. <laughs> it's really brought this different spotlight on comics. But with that said, that's not bringing people into the stores, okay? I mean, Black Panther, Infinity War, Endgame, Captain Marvel, Spider-Man. These are characters that some people have never heard of before in their entire lives, okay? Guardians of the Galaxy, Groot and Rocket Raccoon. I thought I was the only person who cared about these characters back when Abbott and Landing was doing those, those storylines. That was getting canceled like almost every other month. That book would get canceled and brought back by, by fans. But now it's a huge... Now... My kids are eating Doritos that have fucking Rocket Raccoon on the back. You know, what a great world that we live in right now, okay? Right now, I have to give a shout out. Much love to all the, the speculators out there and the variant collectors because those extra orders on variants is really what's keeping, I feel, the current new comic market afloat. Yeah. If it wasn't for those 1 in 500 variants, 1 in 100s, 1 in 200s, all that kind of stuff, the sales of these comics would be a Abysmal, and there'd be no way I think some of these publishers would be able to, to stay around. Man, yeah. that was fantastic. Dude, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, we so, appreciate you yeah, taking the time. Really? That was more, more than 15 minutes. It was like 30, but... What yeah, I would do, I, I talk a lot. Um, <laughs> so do we. No, yeah. no, no, we talk so much. So I was like, I was like, oh my God. I, I hope we got some good... Gave you some good questions and good... Um, but yeah. I hope I gave you guys good sound bites you and material. You just, you <laughs>
name is David Sandin. <laughs> I'm the retail in manager okay for the store cool it all started with uh, I was at my grandparents we do Sunday dinners and stuff like that and my uncle had comic books from when he was a kid he was no longer there but uh, so I just started reading them and then it turned cool. into going to like Target and getting a five pack of books you know cool. and getting them from there and then I was in Westminster Mall which was a local mall here and they uh, had a comic book store in there my sisters and my mother would always go there and i found it so okay. i started hanging out there you and then uh, when i turned 16 i drove to that store and said i want a job and they said well we're not hiring but you can go try mile high oh. down the road so okay. i drove down the road i applied and they said they didn't have any positions available at that time but they had trade credit nights where i could work for comic books so i did i did that for nine months and then the owner asked me uh, or asked everybody for summer jobs and I walked up to him at the end and said I'm interested and he's like good out of everyone here I wanted you <laughs> so I started working that summer of June 90 Wow okay. and I've been here ever since was it Chuck, Chuck, is that his Chuck name? Rosansky. I've, I've read a couple of his uh, his blogs about uh, opening up a comic book shop and how he was just like don't do it <laughs> is, is it pretty stressful and crazy sometimes um, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it I mean there's a lot of things normal people would not know yeah um, and yes it is a difficult situation and I have told the same to two different people that were customers of mine that they should not do it don't do it yeah. don't do it and unfortunately both of them did fail okay so now when you were a kid and reading your comics do you remember the first one you ever picked up from your uncle's stack it was a uh, Neil Adams Batman Neil Adams Batman. Okay. Yes, I read it many, many a times. Okay, okay. Which which one? I don't remember the exact <laughs> issue. Uh, if I saw the cover, I could tell you, but I, I don't remember exactly. That's, that's a good moment. place to start, though. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna start start with Neil Adams Batman. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. And then I became a DC or a Marvel guy after that. Yeah. Okay. All okay. Marvel, and then I'm like, why? Why? <laughs> uh, we used to have another warehouse here in Denver, mm -hmm. and it was up off of 56th here, and we had that for since 1985, so it had been there for quite a while. Um, nine years ago, we bought this building. As I stated, I told the owner he was crazy for buying it because it's so huge. And what were we going to do with it? I obviously didn't have the site he did. But then uh, we put in our extra trade paperbacks and other things just for storage over here. And then uh, people started coming in the door and we decided to open a store in here. Okay. So then it just started to grow. We were only open on the weekends. And then as it kept going, we started doing every day um, and then we sold that other warehouse building just because the market here was crazy and people were offering us tons of money for it so we sold that brought all of our operations into this building and then uh, it's just grown from there cool. I mean it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger I find stuff in the store where I'm like I didn't know we had this <laughs> I can or people I walk up I with stuff imagine. and I'm like where did you find this um, well we do buy collections constantly you know action figures posters books of course yeah. um, the owner's motto is I want to have more when we close than we had when we opened That's... regardless of what we sold in the day we always want to have more okay <laughs> okay fair enough awesome. so now how does this numbering system on all of your books these ones over here how does that work that so we seems used to insane. have an alphanumerical system okay for our back issue system for our website and stuff mm -hmm so we could just find it. But we found that we had to shift all the boxes around, as I'm sure every comic fan knows. Um, and it just got to the point where we're like, we can't do this anymore. <laughs> so we went into a number bin system, basically. Okay. So every time we put a book on the system, um, it gets its own unique number. Okay. We started from one, we're at three and a half million <laughs> right now. Wow. Holy it's cow. been about 10 years, so. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> So each one's given its own number. So these are in order by box, mm -hmm. alpha, alphabetically, numerically, just for entering purposes. And then they're just put up on the shelf and with the numbers. So as we saw out in the store, uh, we have the huge ocean of comics is what we call it. And that's our back issues that are not on our inventory. Okay. Um, and that's just people who can shop through them. But if they can't find it, they can come back to where you saw the help desk sign back here. Mm -hmm. And uh, they can look up and say, hey, we have it. It's one nine one six seven two six, and they just walk over to the numbers and pull it. Wow. Okay. So that's nice. why we have this isolated this out be, because yeah. 
normal people couldn't find anything in here. Well, <laughs> and it would have screw to have up the inventory. system too. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of this stuff would be your inventory that's online for sale. This is all of our website. Yeah. Wow. That's fantastic. Okay. That's insane. She yeah. was. Well, and it, it, I mean, when you're working with this kind of volume, you kind of have to reinvent the wheel. You know, like there's which just, we've done many times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's just no way yeah. that you could do it on a scale of even something, you know, a fraction of this size. So yeah, kind of reinventing the library system is is something that is actually pretty ingenious that you guys have come up with your own system i mean did you did you guys invent this system uh, we we've had people tell us and stuff other employees over time you know being like hey you should try this or this yeah. and that uh, we just kind of took them all together and went let's try it yeah. see okay. what we can do that's awesome so now outside of the sheer size and volume of mile high what is it about this shop that makes it so special what draws people to mile high besides the amount of books i think it's the size uh just the sheer amount of inventory that we carry yeah the divide diversity of the inventory we carry i mean we don't just do books i mean we've got posters in here we've got action figures in here we had other collectibles in here star trek star wars i mean there's a lot of star just wars tons of stuff yeah. yeah i see a dope ass i think that's sandman number three by jack kirby like, look at this see? comic kid. oh yeah <laughs> like we're having yeah. conversations like but the comic <laughs> yeah look at this look at that look at that it's shiny <laughs> oh, i love that sandman cover i'm sorry i just yeah, yeah. So, well i think i think we got what we need yeah, so basically yeah. just some um b-roll stuff of us kind of like following you around in kind of catacombs kind of areas yeah. and stuff would be awesome <laughs> and so thank you for dude, thank you so not a much. problem it was a really great interview. It's nice meeting you guys yeah, yeah. So we finally made it to North Carolina. Um, it's been a day. We met a power trippy TSA agent who confiscated a lot of Lucky's tattoo supplies, even though they were all within the legal limits that you know have been set by the TSA and whoever else runs it. So that was fun. Um, so now we got to get new tattoo supplies. By fun, I meant bullshit, but. Um, then we got this nice hotel room, so... It's evening it out. It's, it's, it's evening itself out, yeah. Everything's been cool here. We got a car. It's not a boner mobile like last time, but it's... No boner mobile. <laughs> yeah. No boner mobile. <clears throat> but it's great. It, it's going to get us where we need to go. So now, what do you do? What do you do when you get to the Carolinas? You go get barbecue. Barbecue! So we're, we're hungry because we haven't eaten today. So we're going to go fill these barbecue bellies. It's hot as hell outside. It's like 90, it's like 90 degrees. And it's, super yeah, humid. Solid 90 degrees. And so this is what Charlotte, North Carolina looks like on a Monday morning. So we're driving That's around. It's a fucking Monday. God. It's a fucking Monday. Like so many kids in the 80s, it was all spinner racks. I guess my generation was the last to have uh, spinner racks at newsstands or grocery stores or things like that. Okay. So I picked things up like that, or my dad would bring me some when he would come home from traveling. Cool. Cool. Do you remember your first comic book? Um, it was probably a Marvel Tales reprint. Okay. Uh, cool. I, I remember at least those were the first ones I kind of gravitated okay. towards did you have like a favorite superhero i think so many kids respond to spider-man for for uh for different reasons and i was 
one of them as a young kid anyway. Okay. Well, I uh, came in as a customer for the first time in 1991. Ended up being a customer for about 17 years or so. Uh, in 07, I happened to uh, find myself uh, between jobs and came in and uh, found out they needed a somebody to organize their warehouse, which this building was the warehouse for the first 15 or so years. Uh, when our location was right across the parking lot. Ran the warehouse for 15 or for 10 years or so and then uh, transferred over to a, a larger managerial capacity okay. a couple years ago. Now, January marks the 40th anniversary of the shop so we're approaching a, a bit of a milestone and part of the reason I think uh, the shop has persevered through numerous uh, changes in the industry is that uh, it, it focuses on customers. It, this is a comic shop uh, in its purest form. We don't have a lot of toys or, or pops or things like that. We really try to uh, encourage readership. Um, so from the beginning, Shelton Drum, the founder, has focused on customers and making sure they're reading things they want to read and uh, and having access to all the books that we have. That's uh, absolutely cool. And can, can you tell us a little bit about uh, Heroes Con itself? Did, did Was that his idea? Was that somebody else's idea that he... he it's you know, entirely his idea. He'd started doing mini cons uh, first, okay. uh, which is, as the name implies, is a smaller show. Um, and Heroes Con has uh, grown exponentially, especially since, I guess, 2012. Uh, but the con, similarly to the shop, is entirely comics focused so we don't bring in actors or voiceover artists while they're talented uh, we try to focus on pe the people who make uh, comics and sell them okay so that's one thing that distinguishes us we are kind of a destination spot and I think part of that is because so many people have heard about the con or come and, and, and seen that it it is fairly unique in in the larger con landscape but there are also people who, who know about the con who forget that the same small group of us who run the shop, run the convention, uh, and that they are intertwined yeah. entirely. So. Well, I think that uh, the people who go to see a, a comic book film don't necessarily have any interest in reading the comic book uh, basis. And there have been countless times, you know, I, I remember with Guardians of the Galaxy, people came in and for some reason with a friend or whatever and they saw it on the stands. Oh, I didn't even know this was a comic book. <laughs> so I think that's, you always hear that there's gonna be some inevitable backlash. I think as long as there's something good being done and it doesn't have to be widespread, yeah. that's the stuff that's gonna to rise to the top. Yeah. I always tell my fellow staff members, it doesn't matter if it's a back issue or uh, a golden age book that we got on a collection or a, a, a trade of something you've never read every week there you should find something to kind of get you yeah. maintaining your energy for it and because there's we're now in a, in a place where we have it, such a wide variety of new material reprinted material um, there's really no excuse for not finding something yeah the the days when it's it's busy uh, which Mondays you know sometimes aren't but um, you never know when uh, what's going to walk through the door. Yeah, and yeah. those are uh, those are always exciting. Is there any chance we quickly. can take a peek at all your gold and silver age stuff? Like, I would love to get a look at that. I don't know if they have it here. Do you? Uh, I've got some in the background. Oh, Not okay. everything, but yeah. I, can, I can show you some stuff. <laughs> yeah, cool. cool, cool. All right. Well, I think that's. You, you I think that's something? about it. That's um, all we really need. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, this thank has you. been a wonderful interview. Okay, um, cool. You given us a lot of great footage here and a lot of good answers and yeah. I'm really and I can I can send you an email yeah this is a great this, this is a really well laid out well shop. curated yeah it's a gorgeous well laid out shop like well we've grown into it like I said when when this was our warehouse you can probably look between the uh, FF and Green Lantern and kind of see a bricked in space yeah wow. so there was a wall there or excuse me a door with a ramp going up mm. uh, this door was always here we had a window over are you gonna go across here and do like a walk up of it? Yeah. Oh, there it is. I'm just gonna go right in, all right? Say what? Uh, my name is Mike Zapsik, and I am the assistant manager here at the Secret Stash, the, in my opinion, the world's greatest comic book store. And, and rightfully so. Damn okay. straight. Um, I've always been into comics. My father had um, six sons. 
I have five older brothers, and we would go on a lot of long car rides, so he would pick up stacks of comic books and just throw them. Because this is before, you know, right. cell phones, YouTube, anything. You know, so what was the easiest thing to do? Get the kids comic books and throw them at, at the kids in, in the back of the station wagon and shut them up. Oh, my God, no. Uh, there were so many comics that I had that, uh, I mean, like I said, we had stacks of them, and we didn't throw them away. My father would, but we'd hoard them and, and keep them, and it was, uh, it was awesome. What it was. Uh, I was a customer before I was a retail clerk here. Before I was a, one of the, the clerks, I was I was the guy who came in for his poll list. So. Cool. That's a, that's the best way to start working at a comic shop. Damn, We've heard that a lot. Uh, it was originally a it was originally over on Mama Street in Red Bank, mm -hmm. rather than you know here on Broad Street, you know the the big time. Yeah. Um, it was a, a smaller store. It was run by a guy who I swear to God, if you took like three hundred pounds of silly putty and put it down on a Simpsons comic book with the comic book guy on it, and you peeled it up. It would be him. He even spoke. He talked like the, the comic book guy. <laughs> That's he hilarious. He looked like the comic book guy. And when they were cleaning out his back room over in the other place, uh, Walt and Brian told me that there was, like, purple velour outfits. Like, it was insane. He said there were, like, six or seven outfits, just purple velour. So you're like, Wow. Okay. That's awesome. yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> and that's something you don't want, you know, you don't want to leave behind because then the stories grow. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I would say Walt Flanagan. Yeah. Walt yeah. Flanagan makes this place special. He's a. How many other places are managed by an actual comic book artist? Yeah. He, you know, uh, drew all of Kevin's Batman comics, Cacophony three issues series which was great even better um, he did um, Batman Widening Gyre which was a six issue series and it had every super villain every obscure super villain that you could you know throw a stick at and it's just an amazing run and you know it has Batman grooming a successor you know he's, he had Nightwing he's got Robin he but you know he's he's got this guy who you know he, he checked out and he's like this guy wants to do the right thing, so, you know, that's pretty cool. That is cool. I mean, we get a lot of people coming in here, and they're like, oh, my God, you guys, you enrich, you know, enrich, oh, my God. Let me, let me, let me backtrack on that one. You guys got me back into comic books. Yeah. Um, I watch it with my son. I watch it with my... You got back into comics because of comic book men? I did. Thank you so much. Yeah. The, you're a case in point. Yeah. My Thank wife you. hates your show. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's probably why we got canceled. So oh, thank, yeah. Thank your wife very much. Oh, did you hear that, Aaron? You know, that that's your one, fault. That one more person we could have had. It's your fault, and, Aaron. If you look back there... Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. You see that? Wow. That is the flag that flew over Kandahar Airfield uh, in Afghanistan on January 5th, 2000. 2014, and a guy came in here and presented that to us because he said that we saved his life. I find out that we're um, or beloved by not, not all the uh, <laughs> not all our troops. I'm hoping. Uh, I know a lot of the armed forces love Kevin's stuff. Yeah, Buddy Christ has flown in B-52s. It's flown in <laughs> fighter jets. It flies in my tattoo and, shops. There you are. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we have people coming in who say, no, you guys are great. You kept the sane over in Afghanistan. This guy claims we saved his life, which is, he told me at the story, you know, um, if it weren't for the show, he would be dead. And uh, we also found out something that was, um, we don't talk about this a lot, but there was um, a support group for guys with PTSD who came over from Iraq and Afghanistan. And they were meeting on Sunday nights, and they were talking their their group, and they decided to go out for a beer one night. So they they all ended up at this bar, and they started talking. And comic book book came on, and they're all like, "Oh my God, gotta turn that up! I love that show!" And it turns out that they all did. So they helped themselves through PTSD. I, I don't know how well, but you know. By it had an effect. Comic book yeah. Yeah. talking about 
the toys they had and the comic books they read and the comic books they still collect or the, the comic books they wish they were still collecting. The you know, joy so. and nostalgia that yes. has the healing power. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and so that to me was like, oh my God, this is fantastic. We don't talk about that. Um, one of the really cool things is that we have a lot of uh, parents with autistic children who come in and you know, my, my kid loves comic books, but he's got Asperger's yeah. or, or autism. And mm -hmm. We're able to connect with them through what's your favorite superhero, and you know, bring him out of his shell a little bit. And it's really cool, and um, this is a safe space for them. You know, they can come in and they, they can be who they are. Yeah, so, absolutely. And, you know, let their nerd flag fly. Yeah, that's, that's what we right. we love doing. Yeah, you know, telling people that this is the place that I mean, you can be as nerdy as you want. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My last question is: sure. Do you get a lot of people when they come in, and they're like, "Oh my God, you actually work at the shop." Every day. Every day. And I'm like, dude, if you, you want to hit my GoFundMe page, that's fine. You know, pay my bills for me. I, don't, I actually don't have a GoFundMe page. But, um, yeah, people come in, they're like, it's so weird. I was, out in, I was out in Vegas, and I went to the Pawn Stars place, and none of those guys are there. I'm like, that's, no, because they don't yeah. do that. Because yeah. this, you know, they're all like, reality TV, you, you guys are all scripted. Not one word. Yeah. It just goes. You try to put a word into Brian Johnson's mouth. <laughs> Go ahead. I dare you yeah. to try and make him say something <coughs> and have him not like stick a fist someplace. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. But, but yeah, it's, it was all it was, it was all us. That's why I'm in the background like being silent most of the time. Yeah. Because Brian Johnson is that much faster than me. So. <laughs> so. All right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, well, thank you for thank hosting you. us. Oh, guys, yeah. not you guys, problem. Thank you. I, I wish you well. Okay, you're going to need to get over. To where? This uh, right. This right here? Yep. Sure. Yep, one more, one more. Yep. Sorry. Don't be good. We made it. Cool. Oh, God. It scared me. Sorry. <laughs> Uh-oh. Huh. I fucked up. Oh, no. Apparently that wasn't rerouting. Oh, no, 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 no. Son of a bitch. That was pretty awesome. Yeah. That was... That was everything we'd hoped it would be and more. Um, Walt Flanagan was there, and so was Mike Zapsek, and they could not have been more friendly. Like, joking around with us, totally did interviews. Devin got uh, Walt to actually sketch in his sketchbook a cryptozoic man, and he couldn't be more pleasant about it. The guy was... The, the place was awesome. Uh, the comic shop itself was cooler than I thought. They had a lot more rad relics. We got a lot of good footage. Um, they had a lot of really great books. Um, they even looked at my books. See, you know, um, I was like, hey, you want to look at my books? I was like, yeah, bring them in. So I brought them in. They were really great. And now I'm going to be visiting with a friend tonight in New York. But Devin here, Devin got, uh, he gets to go. We got invited to go to the, uh, to the shared universe podcast and so unfortunately i'm not gonna be able to go i have obligations but devin is going and he's gonna go represent us at the uh, shared universe podcast and uh who's who's involved in that podcast it's uh mike zap second ming chen from comic book man and then a number of other independent creators that's gonna be fantastic so he's got a meeting with them tonight got invited to do that that's fantastic so we are really excited. That was a super great experience. Like I can't begin to tell you that uh, both of our our inner child joygasm things were going off like crazy. The whole place just had a, kept a smile on your face, and uh, it really is one of the best comic book shops in the world. So, um, but yeah, it was fun. We had a great time. So now we are headed from New Jersey, from Red Bank, and we're going to downtown Manhattan, Grand Central Station, and we are going to um, the downtown Midtown Comics to do our interview there.
My name, rank, and serial number, Jerry Gladstone, co-owner and chairman of marketing at Midtown Comics. Well, I've been in comics since I was five years old. Okay. My very first comic was Hot Stuff the Little Devil, as documented on that awesome one-shot program on National Geo, now on Netflix, okay. um, called Comic Store Heroes. So that was my first comic book when I was five years old, and it really stuck with me. My older brother and everyone were reading superheroes, so I got into that. Marvel in DC over the years, and here we are a few decades later, and I'm uh, still into it. I'm one of the founding fathers of Midtown Comics. A few of us got together. We were already in business in a different, totally different kind of business, and we thought that the comic book community was grossly underserved in New York City, so we set our mind and our sights on putting this whole thing together, finding a great location in Midtown, blah, 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 blah. Fast forward 22 years. And here we are today, still having fun and gearing up for New York Comic Con. So let me say that um, Comics and Stuff is one of our favorite YouTube shows on comics. <laughs> thank that you. That we just love, and I thank you guys very much for taking the time to come out of your way and interview us and go to the store and please talk to the fans and everybody, all the readers floating around. It's Wednesday. Wednesday's a crazy day every week. New comic book day. So, yeah. Well, there's two things. I can point out that are most special about Midtown. Number one, it's easy. We have we have everything. We stock everything. We whether superheroes, mainstream, independent, anything at all. We have uh, expert buyers who uh, really curate the stores perfectly in our three locations: Times Square, Grand Central, Downtown, near Wall Street. So yeah, we have all that stuff. We got the space and the square footage. Uh, almost 5,000 square feet divided between two floors in Times Square, and yada yada yada. But the thing that is really near and dear to our heart is that we, we like to um, strike a community. You know, comic book readership and collecting really is a community. It's not a, just a bunch of customers like any other type of retail. So we like to think that we really foster that. And we push it on our social media every day. And our staff here in the stores, they're all so much into this. They're so much into comics and they're such experts that they just love talking with people. So someone can come in, they might just be a casual fan, read comics 20 years ago, they speak to our guys and gals who work here, and they'll just immediately set them up with what's new, what's hot, what they can catch up on. Because a, a newcomer or a lapsed reader, as we call them, yeah, we have a term for that, um, might not know where to start with Spider-Man, <coughs> Spider right? There's been a million uh, different volumes, different uh, stories, so our guys and gals will tell you exactly where you can jump on, what makes sense to jump on, when it came out, they'll show you where it is, and if they don't have it, they'll get it for you. We work hard here just like everybody in retail, long hours and all that stuff, but it is a thrill. It's everyone who comes in here is here for a passion. It's their hobby. It's even more than a hobby. So it's not like a shoe store. You walk into the Nike store over there, you know, no offense to them, you're lucky if you find someone who cares, you know? Yeah. So um, here everyone deeply cares and they're really deeply um, entrenched in all the storylines. Everyone has their favorites. So if you ask about one character or another, this fellow or that gal might be the one to help you out and just really school you on the whole thing and bring you up to date and say, you ought to read this. So yeah, so basically it's a passion and we never lose it. Even though we're working hard and um, you know, you, you never lose that. And that, that helps you get up in the morning and go in and do it all over again. Yeah. And a little kudos to our fellow comic shop retailers. They have it, most of them have it too. Yeah. And we're all, we're all friends and um, we're all passionate. And the fans come into all these stores and it's something they can share with the people who work all these shops. Yeah. So no matter how small a store might be, it, you know, they certainly have that, that passion, that, that love <laughs> that you're not gonna get when you go into a sandwich shop or a clothing store. Yeah, absolutely. Right. As busy as a man as you are running three locations and all the cons and everything, do you still currently read books? I do. I'm not quite that busy. We have a, a real team here. It's a team of owners and, yeah. and managers and clerks and staffers, buyers, marketers, graphic designers, website developers and all that stuff. So it's really a gigantic team that people don't know because our headquarters is somewhere else. Yeah. But um, so we all work it together. Uh, I always keep up with Batman, uh, Spider-Man. I haven't read the new Spider-Man number one yet, but I'm looking forward to it by J.J. Abrams. Yeah. Um, I'm old school. Superman. Yeah. You know, 
Um, I love some of the edgier stuff from Dark Horse and, um, and seeing the boys on Amazon remind me. I, I read all the original issues. When it was on DC Vertigo and then it moved to uh, Dynamite Entertainment. So I went back and reread some of those. Um, the show is great if you haven't seen it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen it. Yeah. <laughs> it's maybe not quite for everyone, right? It's fantastic. But man, they hit the nail on the head with that. They yeah. really captured the essence of Garth Ennis' uh, stories. Once again, another Carl Urban thumbs up. You Absolutely. Know, the guy's killing oh, it. he's terrific in that. Yeah. Um, I think that's, that's it. it. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay, well, my thank, pleasure. Thank you so thank much. You. Thanks for the great questions. And yeah, thanks for taking the, the time my pleasure. to and talk to gonna, us. Yeah. All right, so it is. 7 a.m. Uh, New York time, which means it is 4 in the morning for Lucky and I. It's the first day of Comic Con. Um, we're. So, 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 blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm awake and chipper because I'm like a child in a candy store. And, um, well, Lucky's doing alright, I think. Uh, but, uh, we're trying to, trying to get ready. We're going to head out to Comic Con here. Um, I'm really bad at speaking on camera unless I know that I'm filming for a YouTube video. So this is interesting because I, this is technically a YouTube video, but this is technically a bigger project. I don't know. Anyways, it's early. I'm delirious. Um, yes. Thank you. All right. We'll see you at Comic Con. <laughs>
place go boom Let's go boom